layering and layering is a method of propagation as opposed to say grafting or 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 planting a seed or planting uh, just a straight uh, straight cutting right all right so certain yeah. trees you can you cannot propagate uh, from a cutting or a seed you literally have to do this method that we're going to show you today and some trees you have to graft that's not what we're covering today, but for example, the avocados and the mangoes uh, and the sapodillas and such and the mames are typically grafted. Air layered plants would be typically, and if you actually go to the back page real quick at the bottom, uh, those are some of the trees that are typically air layered and we have the option of doing any or all of these today. So the first three uh, are in the Syzygium family, the wax jambu, the rose apple, and the madeleine apple. They're all very similar looking fruits. Uh, and we have all those here on the property. Uh, and then the lychee and the longans are also air layered. And we have several uh, on the property. Figs could be done in a few different ways, but they can be air layered. Uh, macadamia nut, we have three different cultivars on the property. They're a little bit harder to do but they, can, uh, they are typically air layered. Uh, if you plant a, ma a macadamia uh, seed or a, a lychee seed, it would take probably 15 years to get to anything. Uh, Chacropia uh, is another tree. The tree is a little bit tall, and we're probably not gonna tackle that today. It would take a 16 foot ladder to get up there and air layer it. Uh, Barbados cherry, Otaiti gooseberry, Cacao. Cacao could be grown from seed as well, but um, but air layering it, uh, and uh, David has done a lot of cacaos at his house, and uh, they they produce much quicker. Uh, guavas, bignè, mulberry. Mulberry could be grown from cuttings as well, but they can be air layered and uh, java plum. Got it. Right? So the, the, the roots provide all the nutrients for the leaves and the leaves do the photosynthesis and make, make the food and send it back down to the roots, okay? So what happens is, and this is a concept we're all familiar with thanks to COVID, um, you have a uh, supply chain issue when you have a, uh, and we all know what that is, if anyone's, uh, anyone in here uses toilet paper? All right, so you know about supply chain issues and the problems, right? So what happens is, is that we are going to make a supply chain issue in here. So we are going to remove a section of bark like Karim was talking about, and you want to get rid of all of, all of that cambium layer because if you don't, what that's going to do is plants are amazing things. And if you don't think so, all you got to do is give a plant a chance and it will make it. And if you don't remove that, that cambium layer, it will callus over and bridge the gap and get the supply chain issues going again. Okay, so that's why it's very important to, to remove that. So we are gonna just make a concentric circle, complete circle around, not too hard, right, to where I'm going to damage the, the white wood underneath, but hard enough to where I penetrate the bark. Then I'm gonna go down an inch or so, and I'm going to make another circle. Now, why am I doing that? Because I'm going to remove this section of the bark, okay, and I'm going to make that supply chain issue. I'm gonna make a gap in the road. Are you with me? So what Karim was talking about, removing that cambium, I have to remove that cambium because if I don't, that is gonna auto heal, right? It'll pallets over and it will, make, it will make that gap again so it can go ahead and do it and you won't get the desired result. So the desired result is what we're doing and I'm just taking a, a, a quick little cut between the both and this, this, Karim made it easy for me by picking this tree. This one, the bark just comes right off. See, and that's stage one of what we're looking to do here. I don't know if you could see that, okay? But that is just, I got the bark here in my little hand because I have to be responsible for the cleanup so you can tell because I'm putting everything in a nice neat pile and not dropping it on the floor. <laughs> if I didn't have to clean up, I wouldn't do that. Um, so what Karim was talking about, now there's a nice little slimy layer on there. Okay, that is the cambium. So what we want to do, he's an excellent assistant. Not good looking as Vanna White, but. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take it and gently just go ahead and shave off of basically all of that sliminess off, for lack of a better term. Now, of course, in real life, you do have to work around it, right? So that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna get on the bottom and you have to be very careful because some of the materials like this one has a little it just takes one complete little line 
and it won't work. All right, so we'll pass that around, kind of show you what we're talking about. I didn't get all the bark off. I'm going to take you back to the schematic real quick. I want to go through this uh, a, little, a little bit more in depth before we dive into the rest of this. So, so you've got the, you know the the outer bark as it st stays there. It, it protects the tree from damage from the outside. So you got the bark. Then you've got the phloem, which moves sugars from the leaves uh, and right through the tree. That is uh, that is uh, the. Uh, that is the, the, the cambium is part of that uh, layer. Then you have the sapwood, which is the, the, the first layer of, of, of wood that, that David was mentioning. And then you have the heartwood, which is in the center. The sapwood uh, brings the water up the tree from the roots, goes to the leaves, the leaves photosynthesize, generate sugars, and sugars come back down through that thin cambium layer, back down to the roots, to feed the roots, so so that's the that's the key right there. So you've got the bark, the cambium, then the sapwood. Those are the really the live, uh, the two live um, layers. Because the hardwood is just yeah. structural, yeah, just to keep the tree in the center of the tree, and the bark uh, on the outside um, is, is, is also protected. Like so, your skin. So again, the sapwood comes up, and the uh, the uh, cambium is the thin layer that comes back down. Yeah, and what we're doing by removing that, thank you, Karen, so what we're doing by removing that is those leaves are gonna say, oh my God, I lost connection to the roots, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, right? But plants have what's called advantageous cells, right? Which means that the cell in that plant could be anything. It could be a branch, it could be a leaf, it could be a root. And what the plant says is if I don't produce roots on my own, that section of branch that from that point where we remove the, the road, where we remove the bark, that section of that branch up is going to die, right? Why? Because it, the highway's broken. Like Karim's saying, it's not getting any sugars going down or coming up. So what will happen is, is that it will go out there and it will produce roots if it can. Well, what do you need for roots, right? You need something to root into and you need moisture. Voila, sphagnum moss. <laughs> So by going ahead and putting moist, not wet, not wet. If it's too wet, it will not work. Okay, so you want moist sphagnum moss on the top of that cut. And what will happen is, is that, oh my God, I'm going to die. If I could just produce roots, I'll be fine. Wait a minute, there's some wet medium over here. I can produce roots. It will root into that and you have an exact clone of that tree. So you would go ahead and you want to have that exact fruit, right? You need a clone. Mark and uh, scrape the uh, cambium. You'll apply a little bit of our rooting hormone to the uh, top part of your cut, or the part that's closest to the anna of the branch. So we have some rooting hormone here. I'll you eat can, a tree. All right, you can, I'll uh, eat Anna. You can buy that, I think, at Home Depot. Yeah. Uh, just get a little Q-tip, apply a little bit. And this is just a little bit because with hormones, too much of it, right, will shut down the, the rooting. So like if we're, and it's not, we're not doing tomatoes, but if you put rooting hormone on a tomato plant, you will not make it root because there's so much rooting in a tomato plant, you'll actually shut it down. Like those weightlifters, you ever see the big guys that take too much testosterone? What happens to them over time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. They were the original trannies. And that's not us, right? No, no, no sheet of, uh, I got a small sheet of saran wrap, um, put your hamburger patty on here. That's been well drained, that's as much as you can, right? Right. And just right. You don't have to take the team. Just, and uh, try to have, you need three hands for this. Yeah, you do. Uh, you need to have a sheet of uh, foil as well, penna ready on the side. So then you just uh, apply this on your on your cut, kind of wrap it around a little bit with the, your other hand. The saran wrap helps to keep the moisture in yeah and kind of close it up i'll cheat go ahead i'll cheat so, but of course you know the branch is still holding on the tree so you, you know you don't need to hold it and do this right but uh so you've got that kind of kind of wrap the ends and then and i always kind of keep that well, underneath my armpit or something <laughs> then then just close this <laughs> this this protects the saran wrap from the birds pecking it 
It also gives it rigidity and holds it all together. Uh, sometimes I'll put two sheets, uh, or it's cheap enough, and you know what's important is for your aerial layer to pay. So I just go for it, put two sheets. Uh, then you gotta mark it. Yes, yeah, very important. When you take these, you have to mark what it is because out here we have different cultivars. Like if you were to take an air layer of a lychee, we can't just sell a lychee. We have to know what kind of lychee it is. So you, you can check back on it uh, in, uh, say, eight weeks. And just wrap it on there and voila. But this is, this is your finished product, right? It will be out there. Um, like Karib was talking about, the plastic is your, is your primary moisture barrier, right? So it doesn't dry out, so that stops the evaporation, right? It keeps that moisture in there. And then that foil, uh, protects it from critters. Make it really tight because these become really good ant hotels. Mm -hmm. So if you are not really tight, like Karim put two sheets on there and he's got it real tight on both ends here, if you are not real tight and twist the foil on there, the ants will find out and then you're done because they're gonna hollow that out, right? And they're gonna take all the moisture out of it so you're, you're, you're done. One thing you don't wanna do is squeeze Yes, yeah. like that. Don't do that. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're just creating a, a pouch. You yeah. want the roots to grow yeah. easily. If you make it hard for them, you know, it's yeah. just it's a tough. You want it to be nice and fluffy and airy, which encourages the roots to go in there. A, a, a cutting is a clone, too, right, because right, you're right. just taking a finger and making a clone. But if you could get the whole arm, you're going to get a bigger stock. A bigger tree. You, you with me? Yes. So you're going to have a bigger fig plant by air layering it. Then by... Yeah, and okay. by this time of year, if you have, you know, the green wood on a fig, you don't even need to cut it. You could do this, just put that wet sphagnum moss on the green wood of a fig during the active growing season, and it will go ahead and sprout into that moss and you're good to go. But only on the green wood and only on a fig. So is it almost- If you have, your friend has a good tree, a good lychee, a good longan, a good, um, a, a good um, mame americana that you really like, Right. Oh, you can go ahead and air layer that, and, and all it costs them is a branch. And to Karim's point, a branch that you might have cut anyway, or they may have cut anyway, because they're hitting their head on the lawn. You can do breadfruit as well. If yeah. somebody has a breadfruit, you can air layer the breadfruit. In the case of mangoes, I can speak to that. It's very sappy. You, you with me? So this has got to be dry, nice. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I do, because I don't always wear gloves, especially if I'm doing soil, I don't wear gloves. Um, I, I take my fingers and I put it on the union to make sure it's dry. So if I feel something slimy, I know I didn't get all the cambium off, right? So I'll do that and then I'll go back and do it again. So I'll feel it and I'll, and I'll go through there. But mangoes, you can never do that. It constantly produces that sap and it'll never dry out. The other fruits on that, sh sapodilla will be the very same sappy. thing. Yeah, you know, it's very sappy, so you can't do that. Yeah. On this one, they didn't put aluminum foil. They put like a plastic bag or something. Like a um, newspaper bag? Yeah, and if you Google it, you got people doing this in India with clay and just, you know, a trash bag. And I mean, it works, you know? You can tell who's not cleaning the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this one is kind of weird. I mean, it's, yeah. it, uh, it's I didn't do this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that yeah, around. but you, you get an idea of, uh, of what the the end result. Now this would be where the 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 air layer part. Do you got it, Cindy? Yeah. The, the air layer. You want to check? Sorry, yeah, man, yeah. I'm, I'm no, hitting here to hit you with no, a spear. No, no, it's okay. So and you would soak that, right? So it's when you problem. remove the move, remove the moss, it, it it does a little le less damage. We're we're happy to sacrifice one for the for the education of everyone in here. But um, but that's why we want to have that on there you need to get the roots that will go in there and will go down and you can see those roots those are nice thick hardy roots those aren't little wimpy feeder roots that's what you want you want you want good thick roots because again they want this to establish quickly to get a good anchor in the ground so when you get <laughs> yeah <I'm out. laughs> so when you get uh so when you get the tree it, the tree is going to last for you gauge would be that it's producing fruit right so we want to do something that's mature enough to fruit Right, so you you would do this on a on, on a fruiting tree. So um, let's stick with our 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 Mame Americana out here. We I don't know how old that is. If it was grown from a seedling, it would probably be 10, 15, 20 years old. 
right? Depending on where it grew from. If it came from another air layer, or if it came from a graft, it would be significantly less, right? Because it wouldn't take that long for, for you to produce fruit. When you come to the caliper, you want something that's, does anyone remember those fat pencils in school? Not, not quite as fat as a cigar, right? But, but those, what is it, the, those, those cigar cigarettes, tipore, tipporellos, tipporellos, whatever they are? Something, something between that. So between a pencil and a cigar. A little bit bigger than a like, cigarette, let's say. Yeah, 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 exactly. You don't want it too thin because remember, to Karim's point, that white wood is the structure of the tree. When you remove that bark, that white wood is, it, you know, is very thin and you'll easily snap it. And that's happened in a lot of, a lot of the classes. So to go with a fatter, a higher caliber right. uh, on, and, and if you have a higher caliber, what happens to your gap? Is it narrower or wider? If you have a fat wider, right? So you'd have to go wider on that because otherwise it'll jump the gap on you. That's great, but how am I gonna get the bark off? I can't, right? Someone's gonna say, just cut that. So I go in what one clean cut right in between, just stay in that groove, go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now citrus, and this is really in the citrus family, but citrus, the bark pops right off, right? Like, and when you do cacao, if you do it at the right time of the year, if you do cacao and you do it at the right time of the year, the bark will pop right off for you, which is nice. If you do macadamia nut, you have to scrape that off of there. It is very, very difficult to do. Macadamia nut also takes about four to five months, but it will eventually go. Don't lose faith. Just keep checking, checking. I had one, I forgot about it because, you know, you know how us men are. Sorry, Oleg. You know, we forget about stuff, you know, procrastinate, you, you know. And what happened was, is I came back and it was done. And it was like five or six months later and it was still good. Right off, and this one, like I said, is easy to do. And all citrus will do this. See how the bark just flakes off. And look in there and most of the cambium came off too. You see where that's kind of greenish? Yeah. That's your little camp, like he was talking about the sapwood. That's your, that's your little... That's your little cambium in there, right? So there's still some on the tree, but there's a lot in that bark right there. So it, this one's so cool, you know what I mean? I, I wore these to protect against them skeeters. Cambium out of that groove? Yeah. Yes, I do, because even if it's one line, one thread that's touching from the top to the bottom, it'll say, I got thread there on a groove. You gotta get that out. So I'm just going ahead in here and, oh, I didn't get a piece of bark there, so. And again, like I like to feel it, and you can actually feel it'll be dry. Let me do this. Sorry, don't see as good as I used to. Right? You want to have all the cambium scraped off of there. You want to have your 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 gap there, an inch or two, or whatever it is. You should feel it. It should be relatively dry, right between those, right? So, the supply chain is broken, right? The roots are no longer talking because we removed that highway, we removed that cambium layer, right? So these, this is gonna say, hey, I, I feel this su substrate around me, I can put out roots and I'm good to go. And not only would it put out roots, but it'll pull out nice vigorous roots that'll go ahead and, cut. go ahead, that'll go ahead and carry the tree, right? We don't want wimpy, wimpy, wimpy roots. We want these good roots that we can put this tree in the ground and someone knocking it is not gonna knock it down because that doesn't do you any good, right? You want a tree that can fruit, so it's got to get big and boom. This was probably an air layer too. So, um, but it's a nice, but it's a nice tree and it's a rare tree. Okay, so that's. It seems to work. I haven't found any evidence, pro or con, that it helps or hurts. Right? It seems to be the same amount of percentage of, of 60, 70 percent uh, of when I take them with hormone. So I take a little Q-tip, get a little dust. Remember, do not breathe this in. It is not some other white powder that you want to snort. <laughs> okay, so I just take this and I just do a minor dusting. Just minor dusting top. all the way around, right? I want to get right on the cut, right under that first cut, okay? Sticks do not help you. They do not absorb water, okay? So they do not help you. So when I see those sticks, I just say, yeah, okay, it helps the soil, but it's not helping me. So you kind of want your ball to be free of any sticks. And, and these aren't too bad. These are at least long and thin. Some of those sticks are, are, are really, really short, like this one. Kind of really cause you some problems when you do your air layer. So you wanna make it stick free, which again is not a problem when you do soil, right? 
So then you take your plus hand, you can go ahead and wrap it and it touches itself. <laughs> well, it's your enemy because it'll just touch itself when you don't want it to, right? And it'll just kind of mend onto itself. This is really sticky. This is like low grade moss. Okay, so now you, you'll feel this when you do it, but it is very, very wet. So there's my softball size that I start with and it'll be a baseball when I'm done. Okay, so everyone see, I tried to do the de-stick it as, as much as I can, but it's, dri it's literally dripping wet. So I'm gonna go out there, look at how much water's coming out of this. I mean, again, you want it moist, not soaking wet. I get that, so I get this guy. just gonna lay it out there you're gonna find this is one of the many times in your life that you said why didn't God put a third arm on us <laughs> it would be so much easier okay so try to center it in the middle there okay I'll take I want to make those ends really tight why do I want to make the ends tight on this no. I don't want any ant hotels correct oops all right so now Here's what you got to do. All right. You get this in your one hand, right? Like Karim says, you tuck this under your arm or you do something with it, you know, and I make sure everything is good there. And I'm going to go around and I try to have it in the center. Okay. Is everyone with me there? Center this sucker up as easy as I can because you want to have room to wrap those upper and bottom parts so it stays on itself. Go in here. Now, the moss, I want to have the moss. I want to put the ball, right? So I don't want to put the ball so it's like way, way up here. Are you with me? Why? Where are the roots going to come from? Roots are going to come from here down. Mm. So I want to have 75% plus of the ball underneath that top right so the roots have somewhere to grow into is everyone with me yeah. so i'm not going to center the, the the ball way up here and have 25 percent because then i'm just not going to have the roots growing into so i want to do that so i'll do that as best i can and then i will take with both hands as best i can flip that one side under and then flip that other side over Th again this is where the the wrap is your best friend or your worst enemy and I try not to move it around too much because again, that's gonna to interfere where I put my, where I wind up putting my uh, hormone. I didn't cinch the bottom good. Juice. And cinch it down. And again, I wanna make sure that those ends are tight so I don't get the ant hotel thing going on. And this also acts as another vapor barrier. So the plastic is your primary vapor barrier, so it doesn't dry out on you. And then you got the foil as another vapor barrier, but the foil is really more for uh, bird or ant protection. And you can wrap the, you can wrap it twice with the foil? Yeah, yeah. So I'll put another piece on there. Okay. We cut sheets that are like, they fit perfect yeah. in your toaster oven. Yeah. I love a toaster oven. So, uh, you know, you just, and they're about this size and they're pre-cut and they're ready to go. And I, t and I do two of them every time I do one because I'm not working on any layer layers that are too, too much bigger than this. And if they are, I'll just cut them, do it. But yeah, I'll go ahead and put a second foil on there. 